Uh, good morning, uh, and uh, we are back with uh, the New European, New European Bauhaus uh, Tuesdays. It's the, the, the second one for, for today. And we are extremely happy to have here with us uh, um, part of the team that developed the uh, Catalan Pavilion at the latest uh, Biennale. And uh, the, the studio is called 300,000 kilometers per second. And uh, uh, they are uh, Mar Santa Maria, y Pablo Martinez, and Pablo Martinez, and we, um, they, they are from Barcelona, and uh, they are the uh, founders of this urban planning agency uh, that is aimed at making cities the most livable places on the planet. And uh, are a team of architects, the urban planners, data scientists, and programmers who explored the potential of big data and new computing paradigm to improve urban analysis, strategy planning, and decision making. Um, as I was saying, uh, um, they are uh, part of this uh, uh, Catalan pavilion that you might be uh, able to see in uh, San Pietro di Castello. Uh, it, 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 it asks for a little bit more effort than normal pavilions, but it's completely worth it. And uh, it's also uh, important to highlight that uh, this talk is also to prepare for a workshop about uh, mapping the air in Venice that uh, we will be doing at U of in September. And uh, the dates will be out soon. And so we very much hope that uh, the faculty and the students will uh, uh, participate uh, in the workshop and also uh, carry on this discussion that uh, has started uh, earlier, goes on today, and we very much hope we'll be able to go on in the future. And so uh, I give the floor to Mar and, uh, and Pablo, and uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, grazie Jacopo. <laughs> we will do the lecture uh, in English, so a lot of people uh, can listen to, to us. So we are coming from, from Barcelona, from this urban planning agency, where basically what we do is to try to use the new data ecosystems that we have today to improve or to change the way we have been designing cities. Uh, so it's a pleasure to share with you today this project that we curated, no? that Olga Subiros curated uh, for the Catalan Pavilion uh, in Venice, where we have the opportunity to, to participate. So I'm going to share the screen with all of you. Ah, Jacopo, you need to... Oh, sorry. <laughs> ...to enable me. Uh, here it is. Okay. <laughs> Now you see the screen? Yes. Okay. So um, this is a work that we begin to develop two years ago, no? when Olga presented the, the proposal for this pavilion. And in this moment, uh, Olga take a very good decision that it was, we're not going to talk about success in this pavilion. So we are not going to be there as Catalonia, as a country that we're going to show our success in some fields of architecture and urban planning. Uh, we are going to talk about our problems, no? about our deals, no? what, what we need to, 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 to do better in the future, no? which, is the, which are the worries that we have uh, inside no? our cities. No? and which is no which is this future that we need to improve and with this point of view uh Olga decided to talk about air no air as the you know the, uh, the pollution no and the quality of, of this of this air and and in this moment uh, she contacted us because we have been working during years about invisible things that happens in the city, no? with the capacity of working with data, analyzing data, data coming from social networks, from sensors, no? from everywhere. No? We have been trying to, to talk about nocturnal landscapes, no? about the, mm -hmm. no? El Bullion, about the, the darkness. No? We have been trying to talk about the, the sound, the noise, no? the noise pollution. No? And this moment, Olga comes to us and says, OK, we are going to talk about air. No? And, and why for Olga it was a, a problem, no? So 
we, we have this image of a part of Catalonia. This is Lebourg. This is a, a place that perhaps some of you, you would like to be there right now, no? So you, you see, no, this beach, no, this landscape. It's, it's a wonderful place, no? Um, but in Catalonia, we have other places, no? Of course, at 100 kilometers, more or less, like this, no? This is Barcelona. And Barcelona, of course, is the main city of, of Catalonia. And, and also it's the most polluted city that we have <laughs> in, in this territory, you know? Uh, and this pollution, sometimes we are able to see as, as we perceive in this photo. This is a photo that has been made by John Tugores. John Tugores is a, a, a pilot, a photographer, and an architect, no? At the same time, all <laughs> the things. And, and he has this opportunity to take these wonderful photos from the city, no? Wonderful photo showing this um, a scary situation no? where we have this city under uh, a deep pollution no? and we only see some buildings, no? we lose the visibility. And this is something that even if you are able to see from the sky, no? when you are inside the city, you don't perceive the pollution. No? The pollution, once you are inside, no? at the ground floor of the pavement, no? what happens? No? The pollution is invisible. No, we look at the sky and you see the blue sky, you see the clouds, no, and you don't have any kind of perception about a, a certain uh, pollution, no. But if we look closer to these streets, what we see is that we have levels. In this case, are levels of dioxide of nitrogen, nitrogen no, uh, that we have levels that they are. Uh, over the standards that recommend the World Health Organization and the recommends Europe. Uh, so these numbers uh, correspond to each photo and the standard, maximum standard is 40. You know? So imagine that the streets where we see trees, where we see public, public space, you know? and we see all these things, we have very high, very high levels. You know? So what happens with this? Um, today we have a situation in which the pollution is invisible. Okay, this pollution that sometimes we're able to see mostly is invisible for us. We are not able to perceive. We don't have neither intuition about this pollution. Sometimes when you arrive to the city, you smell no? something that uh, at the first beginning it's um, a little bit strong, but finally, you know, your your nose it's you know it's used to this. No, to, uh, to this taste, no, and we are surrounded by by pollution, invisible pollution. In this moment is when uh, Olga said, "Okay, we are going to try to explain this with data, and we are going to try to give form to the pollution, and we are going to to try to to model it." No, uh, in our territory we have this big problem, but also we have a big opportunity because we have a lot of research centers working about air pollution and health in, in Barcelona and Catalonia. And this means that for us, it was a very, very big opportunity to find researchers, you know, to find institutions that they are generating data and they are generating knowledge about this field. You know? And then we say, okay, we are going to, to see which is the scenario, you know, the, the state of the art of the data that we are able to to uh, achieve, no, to to have, to 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 develop this model, no, and then we identify it more or less these data sources that you have here, no. By one side, what we say, the measures, no, measurements, and you go and you have, for example, the air quality control stations, no, this these big boxes that we have in the street, no, with a lot of gadgets at the top, no, that they are taking, no, the, the air of the city, no, and they are analyzing these stations that we have because Europe, no, is managing them for say, no, and we have in all the countries, in all the cities of Europe, we have the passive tubes, no, some experiments done with passive tubes, no, that they are very different to the air quality st stations, no, they are small sensors, no, that they don't require electricity, they don't run require any kind of complex supervision no but we have also at the other uh, ex, uh, no, position we have the satellite imagery no this big complexity no that we have thanks to the sentinel network of satellites of the, um, of the european union of the european U union we have photos every three two days of the planet no some depending on the satellite no where we can Take photos from this pollution, no? And also, thanks to this, uh, no, to this, we, thanks to this, we, we are able, no, to 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 take very complex data, no. On the other side, we have the simulations. The simulations it means that 
they are models that they try to to pre, to, to show no uh, using small data sources to explain a complex situation for example in the past no in this case we have or or may or in the past to make a small forecast no this is the case of the calliope and calliope urban they are super um, complex models developed by the Barcelona supercomputing center no where they are able to analyze and describe how was the city in the past when we have detected some extreme episodes, no, and also we have other techniques like land use regression uh, models, the LUR, no, uh, where we are able, also using small data from these measures, no, to understand the all the world city, no, and. Finally, we have the predictions. When you merge the measures, when you merge, merge the, these models, when you merge a land use regression, you are able to predict which will be the quality of the air in the next days. And this is a work that today is developing globally Earth in the city of Barcelona. So we have, as you see, a lot of data. Why we have so many data sources to describe this problem? Because it's data source, it's incomplete by itself. Okay, it's data source. It's not enough. It's not by no uh, alone. Uh, she's not able to explain the whole problem, no, because its data set is able to explain small parts of this uh, complexity. So, so that means no that we need multiple models to explain not just this single reality, making all this information complementary. Exactly. No, we take all the data sources and we try to mix them with different scales with different resolutions with different time range try to mix them and try to make a description a description to give form and shape to this air that is invisible okay what do we have and um, these are those are the the filters that we have in the stations and the air quality stations in, in catalonia um, and this is data that, as you can see, no, for example, the, the number one, it's a filter obtained in the in the city of Barcelona, in the Gran Via, no, in the, one of the main streets that we have in the, in the city. And by the other side, we have here, the, uh, close to the Pyrenees, no, we have other filters that they are super, super clean. No? And by the other side, this is the work of the Lobelia. No, that it's showing us, which is the how change the pollution along the along the day. Okay, so showing different frames from this density of pollutants in 24 hours. What does it mean that the pollution that we have seen in the first photo, even if it means like a static cloud, we can see that change that moves a lot during the day that change the density and change the, the shape. And this is very relevant because sometimes we see in the newspaper, no, we have a, uh, so here in Spain, we have a boina, no? It's a kind of hat, a boina, no? That we have a boina over the city, no? no? Un capello, no? Un capello de inquinamento, no? It's, it's a, a kind of expression that we use and it's super, uh, no? it's super wrong. So we are not able to say that there is a hat piece this hat is moving. It's it's constantly changing the the shape, no. And this is another model. This is the model from the supercomputing center that here we has been representing this density, no. And we see how there is a part of the city that it's really under this field of pollution, no. And also this model, no, that here we show from the supercomputing center. We show here, and here is a vertical insights from this model showing how the density of the pollution changed uh, according to the, the K where we take the, the, the observation. No? And here it's very relevant because we see that, of course, there is a change. So the pollution has a weight. And it means that at the bottom, we have more density of pollutants. And at the top, we have less density of pollutants of K. This is, a, this is something that happens. But also we see that it changed very low, this density. It's not that at four meters, whoop, this pollution disappears. It pollution, this pollution needs 25, 30 meters to, be, not, to really disappear. So this is not a hat. This is something that is touching the floor of the city, OK? that it's, it's not over us, we are inside this pollution. And this is one of the parts that is very, very beautiful from the model of supercomputing center, no? By the other side, thanks to the team of IS Global and the Agencia de Salud Pública de Barcelona. So we have this, um, uh, which is the correct word in, 
this, this burden death uh, due the due the pollution, no? Where we know that every year 2,100 inhabitants they are dying because of pollution, no? To take a, a look, we are a city with 1 million and 600 inhabitants, and every year, no, we have a renovation, no? So a uh, dying population of 15,000 deaths and 2,100 are because of this pollution. So well. Not bad, so it's a big number and yeah. something that it's very and relevant. Not only deaths, no. So uh, air, po uh, like air pollution, it's causing a lot of no long-term diseases. It's affecting differently, you know, young people and old people. And so that means the impact. It's not just the deaths, no, but also all the other no uh, uh, impacts that it's generating. Exactly. So thanks to IS Global, we were able to, to build this map. This is a map where we have in red, we have the areas with more density of pollutants. In this case, the measurements are done with passive tubes, with these small tubes that Jacopo Gali in the future is going to work in, in Venice. No? So this is more, <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, of course, Jacopo. <laughs> and, uh, and, and this is small tubes no? that you put some of them in the city and you are able to make a kind of interpolation and decide, no? It's an average intensity from three months or a kind of period of this of this size. No, so it's not real time data. It's not hourly data, as you have seen no, in some examples. It's a kind of monthly data no, that you are able to to describe. No, and here we see the most dense areas with pollutants, and the black dots are the deaths. And this is something super important because if you see this map. You will see that there is not a strong correlation between the red shape and the black dots. So where we have the super center of this um, of this red shape is not where we have more deaths. What happens here? Which is the correlation or this relation between the deaths, you no, know, the exposition, you no, know, this intensity of pollutants and the number of people that is going to to die because of them. What happens here? We have the vulnerability, okay, here. And this is perhaps one of the things that they are more important in this project that explains how, which is the relation between the pollution and, and this uh, amount of that. By one side, the vulnerability is the dem uh, demographical vulnerability, you know, that we say is the age. You know? Old people, you know, it's more sensible to, to this pollution, but also young people, very young people, you know, that they are growing, you know, they are, you know, and they are developing you know, its body, you know? so they are, they are more sensible to this. We have also this, um, uh, how, how we can translate this? The incomes, yeah, you can say incomes. It's a little more than incomes, no? It's a, no, the, the, your pro, your problem to access to to goods, no? Where so it's like poor, no? So it's more or less, no? That it's yeah, not the impossibility to change. No? Yeah. For example, the place you are living because you don't have, no, like a really high income, and if you have a really bad condition in the environment, you need to stay there because you don't have the possibility to make this vital change. And then we have the, the dwelling, no? the housing. No, where it's super important. Hmm? No. It's super important because we have, which is the, the quality of this, uh, of this housing. So which is the quality, which is the size, and how, how you need to put air inside this, this housing, how this uh, house isolates you from an exterior no? that somehow can be polluted. No? And also how this uh, house can emit also pollution, no? The, the old kitchens, no? The old systems of heating, they are providing pollution inside the building. So also the dwellings are a new layer on this vulnerability. And late the, we have the, later we have the amount of public space. So which is the amount of space to make cardiovascular activity, no? To go walking to the places, no? To don't need the, the private, transport, no, to be able to use using the bike, no, to, to play in the street, to have the public space and extension of your home, no, and how accessible is this space to you? These four layers are behind this relation of this amount of deaths and this uh, ex exposition to the to the pollution, no? Of course, is, is this, and now is when we show again this photo, no, that there was at the beginning. This is, this is Begur, as I say, and now I'm going to say something to you. Here, we don't have pollution of NO2. Here we have ozone, 
ozone is a pollutant that it's a derivation, a transformation of the NO2. It's a 100 kilometers from Barcelona. And here we are overpassing the limits of the World Health Organization every day of the year. Every day of the year here we have, we are exceeding the limits of ozone. And this area that sometimes we perceive as a natural environment, healthy yeah. environment, no? And our intuition say, wow, this place, it's, no, it's, it's a it's healthy amazing. place also, not only beautiful, it's, it's healthy. It's a very polluted place. And it happens, and here I think that it's something of the part that it's most important, that even if the pollution that we provoke inside the cities seems that it's breathed inside the city, this pollution also travels. This pollution has an impact in the territory, okay? It's not an isolated problem. It's a problem that it's connected with a whole territory. And also the origin of this problem, it's in the same territory. It's not only in the same city. So with all these models that you see that we have observed uh, separated, no, and we have tried to take conclusions in a separated way, we, we put here some results, some conclusions, short conclusions by one side that the pollution is transparent. It's not the pollutions that we have in England in the, no, in the, yeah, 19, in, 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 in the 19th, no, in 19th century. No? But, so today the pollution, this pollution that it's killing, it seems that it's transparent, but also the pollution is dense. So pollution is not something that raises up. Pollution tends to go down and tends to be inside the streets and tend to saturate the streets. And where we have more density, it's in the ground floor. Not, no, so, and it means that where we are is where we have more pollution. Um, and also it's very interesting to understand that change a lot horizontally the pollution. So you can be in, an, in a side of the street with a lot of pollution. And in the other side of the street, you can have the half of the pollution. So horizontally, the pollution can change a lot. Also, turning the street, no? mm -hmm. uh, you can decrease a lot of the pollution. But instead, vertically, doesn't decrease so much. So it's a deep layer of pollution. So this is against our intuition. So at least our intuition before we begin this project. no. So that we thought that the, that the pollution decreases a lot vertically and horizontally was very uniform. No, horizontally it's very uh, changed a lot and vertically it stands. Okay, and this idea that changed between two sides of the street, no, and also this idea that of course the pollution it's inhaled with where it's produced. Okay, so there is a car in the street and I break this air, but these people that it's producing, no, this this guy, no, this person that it's and guiding no, this, uh, this car, no, he is not breathing this air. So there is an special injustice, okay? There is an special injustice that someone in the city is breathing the air that someone was, has produced. And this is a very important thing because it means that 2,100 inhabitants are dying by an injustice, a spatial, no, by the spatial injustice, no? Because there is a relation of factors, no, that makes that someone is going to, to have this impact. And something that is very important, that it's the scale. We say that pollution is the side B of the climate change. In the moment that we extract uh, no, um, fuel, no, that we extract fossil, uh, that we extract the carburants, no? Of course, we are emitting CO2, and we know that this CO2 is transforming the planet. And we know that it's very difficult to observe this transformation now. In these last years, we have very high evidences of this, but it's not directly uh, photograph photographable. No, so we have uh, these uh, reporters no? that they 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 make photos no? from no? from the ice melting no? in the in the North Pole, but the evidences of this. Uh, climate change, they are very difficult to, to understand. But the other side of this climate change is that inside the city, we are polluting. By one side, we're changing the climate. And by the other side, in the, in the cities, we are directly killing people you know, with this pollution. So we have these two scales of the problem, that they are two crises that they are connected, but also very important that the climate pollution in the city also has this second level, this, that is the territory. No, the, the pollution that we, of course, this car is emitting NO2, and we are breathing this NO2, uh, but also this NO2 is transformed in ozone, and the ozone, even if in the 
in the stratosphere, it's very inter interesting in the troposphere, can have uh, bring at very uh, hard problems of asthma, cancer, and a lot of disease. No, so for this reason, Barcelona today it's polluting. For example, the Luna Park that we have in front of the city, no, that is in a mountain. Also, there we have every day uh, over. No, we are in, no exceeding the, the the levels of ozone. No, and the world, this locality that it's precious. No, that it's super beautiful. Also, there we are increasing this. Uh, no, we are overpassing. Yeah. I levels. will say there is another another important idea. No, that this is the idea that there there's no there are no safe levels for for air pollution. No, so European Union has fired. No, find Barcelona. <laughs> Uh, with with a lot of money because we were exceeding the legal limit, we are overpassing no, the recommendations of the World Health Organization. But what the scientific evidence says today is that they are no safe levels. No, so the impact begins not in these thirty you no know, uh, micrograms uh, of NO two. It begins in zero. No, so that means that also in the process no uh, of making the project. Even no, the scientific uh, evidence is evolving, e and even no, these two two thousand and one hundred deaths were a number no that we need to build no according to this last. Uh, no, Imagine that three evidence. years ago we say that in Barcelona there was five hundred inhabitants dying by air pollution. Two years ago we say we have one thousand, and today we say we have two thousand. Why? Because the evidence is showing us. That there are no same levels and there are more diseases that they are related to this pollution. For this reason, we understand that we are in a scenario that this is growing, no? And today, even if in all the planet, no, pollution is killing more than the wars and terrorism attacks and any kind of uh, no, the AIDS or any other thing, uh, also inside the city, the evidence is showing us that it's killing a lot. So these images, so we can say that more or less the project was in this point in the moment that arrived at the, the lockdown, no, um, one year ago, more than one year ago. And then happened something super, super unexpected, as it has been the, the last year, that we have seen how our cities were empty of cars, no? How super fast, no, we 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 achieve the best levels of air pollution that we have, have been able to observe in the city of Barcelona. So we 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 smell the mountain that we have in Barcelona for the first time. No, if you were in the city center as we are, we were able to smell not the mountain and we are able to smell the, the sea, no, the, the, the salt of the sea, no, something that we have never been able to smell in, in Barcelona. But then some months later, as you see here in the date that we have after, no, this is the pre-lockdown, this is lockdown, and this is after lockdown, we increase again the pollution, and we increase even more than before. What has happened? So this is the previous scenario, more than no, two years ago. This is during lockdown, when we were able to demonstrate that cars, they are behind this problem. No, but we have, If we remove cars, we reduce the pollution, but some months after, we are back to the original scenario or worse. Why we are not able to change this? What happened? No, and this is what you see. No, this is the different letters that we have from different sensors of air pollution in no close to, to in Barcelona and close to Barcelona. And between these two red lines is the lockdown period. No, what has happened? That even if we have this evidence, even if we have this uh, a strong demonstration, this big experiment, this big performance that has been the, the lockdown, how we are back to the same position, okay? This is the, one of the biggest questions uh, that we were able to make ourselves uh, in, the, in the lockdown. And this is more or less is our conclusion. So the problem, it's not the car by itself. The problem is the city that needs the car. And the city, the car, it's very easy to change a car. It's very easy to change the technology or remove the car and go into other direction. Direction, but it's very difficult. It's change the cities that we have today. Cities, you know, that they need to work. We need this car. This is to exemplify a little bit and the, um, this hypothesis. You no, know, we have these two cartograms that we were able to make with the. Um, with a matrix of mobilities done with uh, cell phones, 
okay, during the uh, during different periods that we have here, uh, and we have Catalonia during night with the real shape, no, and uh, during the night, no, where it's supposed, no, that all population is that it senses it's in its house, no, and how change the density of population during the day. So we have some areas that here are invisible because they are neither a pixel in this image, that like they they increase they increase because they increase population no they obtain population from other parts of catalonia and we have this big centrality no that that makes like a an air balloon no that it's inflated no and 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 needs no and, and and increase no and also if we make a zoom to this matrix of mobility we can observe that it's not all barcelona that it's increasing and the population we see that we have some points in the city that they are obtaining population from all Catalonia. This is what you have, well, the point that it's highlighted in the left. It's a point near Plaza Catalunya, Passeig de Gràcia, who, who has been in Barcelona more or less knows that this is the city center, no? the part of the offices, no? the, what is our and city, the and the shopping malls, no? the shopping areas. No? Uh, so, and here we have a matrix of mobility that arrives to the last periphery of Catalonia only in one day. And super close, we have other neighborhoods that they have a very controlled matrix of mobility, not only moving in the same city, even in the closest neighborhoods that they have around. So this idea no, that we have a territory that is going to Barcelona every day. So this big centrality, no, and and when they say Barcelona is not Barcelona, it's some part of, of the city, no. And here we say, and why it's happening this? Of course, we have uh, something in the basis that it's a territory, or territory doesn't help not to manage this situation because we have mountains, no, that they're retaining the pollution and the territory. It's a it's a problem itself. But also we have over this territory a build density that we have provided to our city. A density that it's exceeding the necessary, as a density that somehow during a lot of years we have said a dense city is a good city. So in, in our school, they have said, okay, Barcelona is a dense and a mixed city, and this is super great. And we here we say, okay, perhaps it's too much dense, and perhaps what we say here, the mixture, no, perhaps it's not mixture as we suppose it to be. So we have, of course, here we, what we see is the, and the offices and commercial areas in the city that, as you see, they are concentrated only in some parts of the city. No? And we say that the density exceeds a little bit, but also the mixture is not well designed. No? And this bad designed mixture with an excess of density is generating this uh, centrality, no? it, this uh, exceeding centrality that is generating movements in a whole territory that is quite big. So uh, to deal with this and not to finish only making a little diagnose, we we provided in the, you know, in, the in this in this work some some lines of right, you no know, uh, strategies to act you no know, against the pollution and these strategies they are twelve because we we were developing them and finally we have synthesized them in twelve. We develop it with the with the teams you know with the teams of scientists you know, that they help us us providing the data and the insights and, and the literature and all this. And we have, uh, we have classified it in three chapters, the users, the public space and the mobility. And also what we did is try to make a cartography and territorialize the hypothesis of transformation. Okay, when we talk about change the users, okay, is what we say here at the beginning, design the mixture of users. Now that we are here in the European Bauhaus, there is something very difficult when we say design the mixture of users because we have the uh, Wolkenstein Directive that avoid us to design where we want to put the economical activity in our territories. The Directive Wolkenstein say, put the economy where the economy wants to place. <laughs> and we say, no, we, have, we want to have control of the city because in, we are not able. So we need to, to separate the things. We need to, to design where is the place of the activity and don't let the economy decide which is the design of the city. And the same with the density. We say here, we say a sponge and desurbanize. We have areas around the city with very low density and they are not... Uh, they don't have a very good performance of urban fabric. So perhaps we need to make by the first time the hypothesis of say, okay, we are going to cancel these territories 
and we are going to no we are not able to serve them they have ne they never are going to be sustainable so we are wanting to stop to consume uh, yeah. land no and by the other side in the city center we need to reduce the density now for example we have a debate no and also this is very related to the Bauhaus um thing no that we need to increase the amount of dwellings inside the city and somehow here is saying okay we are going to subdivide the big dwellings that we have inside the city no we are not able to put more things inside the city inside the city center we need to reduce the amount of people the amount of buildings we are not able to create um an increase of value of the buildings increasing the density with the planning we are not able to go in this direction no and of course we need to refurbish these buildings that should protect us no, in the in the future, no, we need to refurbish them, and more or less all the all the city should be fixed. No, by the other side, we need to remove the parking lots. We are not going to remove the car if we don't remove the the, the no the parking lots where the finally the where the car is lives. No, the transformation of Barcelona during the last years, the transformation of the ninety two and the transformation in two thousand and four has been able moving the cars under the floor. The miracle of the transformation of the public space of Barcelona has been removed the cars to the underground. To the underground, obtaining money from this movement, no, because you need to pay to put the car, in the, and, and you have a big revenue, and you are able to pay the transformation of the public space. But by the other side, what you are doing is to permit to put inside the city this car. So we need to really remove the parking, not hide the car. Okay, and also the public space. Of course, we need to design the green. The green, we have this intuition, or we that has a big power, but also it's a big danger. If the green is not designed, it can increase the amount of pollution inside the street. If green is not well designed, it can provoke allergies. No, if green is not well designed, it can be also a problem for the uh, no for the air pollution itself. No, and also to, we need to make cooler the city. We need to design the street canyon, so it means we need to design the section of the street, and it means that we need to, to consider that one side of the street has a double of pollution of the other side, and it means that, for example, if we are doing, doing uh, how, how is it in English? Yeah. No, super plots, no? The, ah, the super blocks. No, the super blocks, and we, have, we are redesigning the, the street in our city. It means that in one side of the street, we are going to consider that some activities may differ from the other side of the streets. For example, never put a, a bike lane in the polluted way of the street. Never put a bank, a place where I stay during hours in the polluted side of the street. We need to think that our streets are asymmetrical. And this should be no very, no, we need to be very conscious. In this case, you see the, the street that they have this section, no, that it's more sensible to this saturation. And also here, uh, continue. Uh, and also here, no, no, you, you have people, you have work, we have people singing, it's like summer uh, in Spain. So as Pablo was, was saying, no, uh, the other important point is to make no, these cities workable, no, and we need to provide this infrastructure to these different people that have these different ages to be able to work in the public space. No? So that means shadows, that means no, uh, urban furniture. So this public space uh, should be no, attrezzato, no? And <laughs> as we say uh, in Italian. No? So last part of course no uh, of the actions it's about mobility uh, and of course here it's about no uh, using more bike and organizing no the really last no uh, contact no uh, this door to door no a uh, logic of the bike being able to provide it uh, uh, around the city improve the the public transportation that it's something that it, it may seem obvious in barcelona that we have a quite good network but the relation with the territory it's not equilibrated and also we have a lot of you no know, areas of the city that are still need to be you know better connected then another important point it's about the logistics it's about the last mile it's about understanding that uh, you know the worst cars that we have in the city right now in terms of performance and air quality are the bands that are you no know, uh, moving packages around the city and it's something that with the lockdown we have seen you no know, as a kind of acceleration of, of this last mile logistics that we need to 
control and we need to, to regulate because it's going to be in the future a huge impact in this air quality. And finally, uh, we need to, no, we need to, I will say attack, but I think it's a really hard word. No, we need to really try to remove no, uh, this car from the city. And that means no, uh, like low emission zones or ultra low emission zones, or even the idea of having a urban toll, no, that it's also a big discussion that we are having in Barcelona today. So uh, as you see, the project no, has identified the, the data, trying to give shape to the air, no? trying to understand which is the logic no, within this, in this generation of the air and the, and the shape of the city and, and the territory, and then trying to, to put over the table which are the, the lines of actuation, no? which are the, the, these actions that we should include in our planning no, in our city. And after all this, the question that we put in this in this Biennale, no? in the moment no? the, no? that, 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 that there is a reflection of how living together. No? And we talk about this area. Now that we have these evidences, now that we have the, the how, no? the why, the who, no? so who is dying, why it's happening this, no? and how it's happening all, no? which is the relation between these factors. No? The, the question that we are doing with self is, how much mortality, you know, these 2,100 inhabitants, we want to assume as a consequence of our way of living together. So our ways of living at, and are generating deaths. You know? It's something that has happened. It's happening uh, when we are transforming the climate of the, you know, the, climate of the, uh, yeah. of the planet. It's happening as a relation you know, of a consequence of a lot of things you know, that we are doing. But now the pollution evidentiates very well that these deaths are happening here. In where we are living, you know, to our neighbor, to ourselves also, okay? Which mortality we want to assume for our model of living, no? For these cities that sometimes we are not able to change, for these territories that we don't want to change, not for these centralities that we don't want to change. Something that is happening now, now that we are going more or less after COVID, no? And we see back again how the poles of centrality, they are reclaiming its position, no? when we see that we need to go to a decentralized territory, you know, where we need to go to a lower dense uh, you know, um, um, mixture, you know, where we need to, to have this control. You know? And we, now we see that these uh, classical centralities, you no know, port of centralities, they are reclaiming this, this position. And OK, only to, to show something beautiful before we, <laughs> we finish. <laughs> it, this is more or less, uh, no, this is some photos of the, of the pavilion. No? You, you, if, you, if you are in Venice and, and you go to visit this, no, you will see no, this, this big corridor no, where you have, we, we, we bring from Barcelona these filters of pollution. So the, the pollution of Catalonia is itself <laughs> in the pavilion no? with its density so there is a glass so you can touch but is there no the, the pollution so we took the this this is the the powder that in one day it's accumulated on this filter so this is what we break what is inside no you know inside us so we we bring this pollution and uh, when you are outside this corridor when you can you can take no uh, all these maps and observe these maps are a kind of audiovisual no explaining more or less what um, more briefly no um, the hypothesis no show it here and here you have also the the website with a lot of data you can download data you have videos in the future we are going to put the catalog in pdf so you have a lot of resources because we understand that this year so many people is not going to be in venice and but we want to, to explain and show the, the project everywhere. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you, Mar. Uh, it's a it's very it's, it's a great uh, research and it's uh, it's amazing the results that uh, uh, even unexpected I think uh, come out of uh, of these. Um, I, I I told you that I, I loved also the title of this uh, this Marshall Berman quote. Uh, and, uh, and this idea that uh, I think stands very much in the thought of Berman, that is uh, that the problems of modernity are not to be solved by going, going against modernity, it is impossible to go against modernity, but by using the tools of modernity in a better way, 
and adapt them uh, to, 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 to construct a future that is, uh, that is better for everybody. And I think that that is very much shown in your work, this, this idea that uh, uh, technology data uh, might have been part of the problem up until now, but now perhaps can be part of the solution. Um, so I don't really know if it's a question, but um, I, I think that it's, it's very interesting also in this framework of the new European Bauhaus, but for the first time, it seems that the European Union tends to focus on uh, urban form, on how the city are built, not only the bits of the city, but also the concrete elements of the city. And so uh, do you think that this micro data that you were able to collect uh, um, are able to construct also a kind of morphological uh, change of the city, even at a small scale, to, to really not only change the behavior and the functioning of the whole city, but also uh, to, to also change the city, uh, the urban pattern in a way that is also visible. Yeah, I, I think that absolutely. So there is a part of the problem that it's, uh, it's what we, and this is something that we have been discovering where we were working. So it's not part of the initial hypothesis, no? But we have seen this a strong relation with, between the shape of the city and the, and the pollution, no? And, and, this is, uh, and this is relevant. It's this idea of the density, something that it's super simple as density, no? That the density is behind the first decision that we have in urban planning, no? How many things we are going to put <laughs> in, no? So which is the amount, no? of surface, no, that we are going to put in a territory, in a plot or something, this density is the key, no? And we don't have a reflection about which is the limit of the density. So density has a limit, no? And then it means that the topologies, the morphology of the topology that we are going to provide to a territory should have this, this limit of density. Somehow um, the density has been very good aligned with the interest of the real estate market, no? And I think that Barcelona is a good case because we can have different urban plans where every time we have added one floor to the city, you know, in different areas, no? Because urban planning say, okay, it seems that density is good, that real estate is happy with density. We can generate profits for refurbishment of buildings when we add density, so works. <laughs> and we say, no, there is a limit. And this is important. Also, we see other uh, conclusions related to the morphology as the direction of the street can be relevant. In the case of Barcelona, we have the, um, uh, some streets uh, that they are parallel to Gran Vía. We can say that they are also parallel to the sea and, and perpendicular, per se, to the direction of the winds that they come from, from the sea. And this wind, what it's doing, it's make a Venturi effect that stratifies the pollution in these streets. So in these streets that they are parallel to Gran Vía, we have more density of pollutants because the direction of this uh, calm wind that comes from the sea, it's condensing the, the pollutants there. It means that a territory no, has an impact no, on, or needs to have an impact on, on this direction of the streets mm -hmm. because we have the other streets that they, they are they have the other direction that they are healthier. No? So the form of the city, the shape, this morphology has a, a, strong, uh, a very strong relation. And it's because this, that, um, not this sentence, not that, not this, this play of words, not that all urban melts into the air, no, that we have to say, okay, all the urban, of course, somehow, some decisions that sometimes they are very difficult to measure, no, that we are not able to observe the conclusion of this, of some morphological aspects, they are reflected in the air finally. finally. When you separate some uses, you see in the air. Perhaps it's very difficult to analyze in mm -hmm. a graph of mobility with cell phone rules. This is crazy to analyze. But instead, you see in the air. When you put too much density, yes. the result of this decision, you see in the air. <laughs> when, you, the, no, when you take a wrong decision about how to put this direction of the street, something mm -hmm. that it's very difficult to evaluate, you see in the air, in the moment that we are able to paint the air, to draw the air and have the shape of the air, all these decisions that until the moment were, were very difficult for us to understand, we can see through the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I will say that for us, you know, thinking about these ideas of form, 
uh, working with scientific evidence, it's the key to make the translation. No? And I think here, the role of the architect and the planner no? and, and no? in the context of the new European Bauhaus is important because it's the one that finally is shaping the street. No? So Paolo was talking about this territory, about this building, but also this public space. No? So at the moment where we design a good street, no? we put those things where they need to be, we are making this street healthier. And that is the scientists that today are telling us, no? So we need to listen, we need to mediate, no? To, because we are the ones that can translate it, this into a design, into a form, but we need to have no, the, the evidence. I think uh, it's, uh, we, we will do this, uh, this little experiment in Venice, but I think it's, um, it should be extremely interesting to see what, um, what comes out because uh, um, for many reasons, uh, and uh, it's hard to forecast, but I think Venice is exactly on the opposite scale as Barcelona being one of the most, uh, Barcelona being one of the most uh, morphologically uniform city perhaps in Europe, and Venice being one of the least, uh, because we have a city center with the 35 million tourists a year, and we have the industrial complex, uh, the uh, Benevolo in the plan calls it the bipolar city, you know, this mm -hmm. idea of the, of the city that has these different conditions. So um, I think it will be extremely interesting to, uh, to see what comes out of, of this. And uh, uh, I really believe that uh, this sense of surprise that you guys were talking about, uh, of not being able to, uh, to bet on, <laughs> on the results of the experiment will be much much, uh, much bigger in Venice. Um, so have you thought about the idea on how this could be applied in different cities and how po possibly uh, things can change uh, dramatically? Yeah, I think that it's true, Venice, of course, <laughs> it's the, I, perhaps the most extreme city in the planet, I don't know. <laughs> so uh, it's not like the outlier inside the experiment and we don't know. So it's, it, it's, it's, it's an, a place that it's different to all other places in the world, no? And of course, there is some, some situations and some insights that we consider that there can be relevant. No? For example, the uh, a station of air observation that is placed in Venice, is in the worst place of the city if you want to evaluate the air pollution. So you have the station more or less middle in the sea, you know, for say, yeah. so where the air it's more more clean. No? So of course, this station I don't know what is trying to measure, no. And of course, obtaining some insights can bring a, a decision about where we need to put this this station and reclaim a change of position, no, to 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 put this station in the more representative place because this is. These stations should be placed in representative places, no? And this place is not the middle of the scene. And um, of course, we can observe, no? What happens in a city that we don't have cars, <laughs> but you have vaporetos, and and mm -hmm. now you are going to have Landinave, no? And no, you are going, no, the, the crisis, no, and all these things. So, what happens with this? Of course, this variable that is very relevant, it's replaced by another um, variable that also inquinates, no, and pollutes uh, a lot, no? Because also the, the fuel no, of these vaporetos are not better than the fuel for the for the cars, no. But somehow we say, okay, each city needs to understand that behind this there is different rules behind this pollution. I think Barcelona it's very clear that it's the density, is the mixture, and this necessity of the car. This is um, no, this is very 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 clear. Other cities, they have other, other situations. But for example, in, in Spain, we made an experiment where we took all the pollution of all Spain that from the satellital imagery. So with a, it's a lower resolution, but works. And we take all the cadastro of Spain with all the build density that we have in, in all the country. You know? it's, a, it's a very nice big data model. No? Uh, and we make a correlation and we obtain it perfectly and strong correlation between which is the density and which is the, the pollution. So there is a universal rule that we are combining. So this, this experiment was made after the, the, the exhibition, so we are not able to include as a, as a more result, but it happens. And we would like you know, to understand how other cities you know, mm -hmm. are, are facing this, so how other cities uh, establish this relation. But more or less, we know in the background is the same, 
but somehow change a little bit the, the ingredients. Yeah, and I said that I, you said something that I think it really it really relevant. No, that that data and technology have been part of the problem, and they can be part of the solution. No, so it happened. Uh, no, for us, it really it really important to understand that if we are able to replicate somehow, you know, the methods and having some common data sets between cities, what we can do is to compare and learn. No, it's something that. And uh, now it's possible, no? If we think, for example, no, in another common problem that we have Venice and Barcelona, which is the tourism, no? And we take, for example, data from Airbnb, which is, no? Uh, that we can have access, no? In both of the cities, we can compare, no? Our situations, no? Uh, that can be done no, with the satellites no, uh, in the same way. No? So that empowers us not only from the professional side, but I would say no, that the, the students that at the end are citizens to uh, also collaborate and be part of this, of this transformation. No? And that, that's where no, data and technology for us can be also part of this like of common knowledge between uh, knowledge and solutions between between cities. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you, Mar. Uh, it was wonderful. Again, I'll repeat what I said at the beginning. Uh, this needs to be only the beginning of a much deeper discussion that we hope uh, that we can host uh, in, in Venice uh, in September, but even after, because as you can see, there are many things that uh, uh, we can uh, that we can share all together. And uh, thank you very much, and uh, hope to to see you soon. <laughs> thank, thank you, you thank you. We hope to to see the results of the experiment. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and see you there in in Venice. That will be a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Grazie.